Welcome back to Cisco Live 2012. TC Doyle here reporting. Uh, with me is Morali Sithram. He is the Vice President, General Manager of Cloud Collaboration here at Cisco. And we're going to talk uh, some new tools and some new opportunities for customers. Morali, thank you so much for the time. How are you doing? Thank today? you. Good to see you. Enjoying the misty, foggy weather out there in San Diego. Uh, I love San Diego and I love being with partners and customers and analysts as well. Well then you're in the right place this week. Before we dive in, for those that don't know you, let's give a little bit of background. Uh, you've been with Cisco for how long? I've been at Cisco for five years and um, I'm responsible now for all the cloud collaboration applications which includes WebEx, uh, the Quad uh, social networking platform, uh, the backend service that powers Jabber, uh, Callway, which is our WebEx, uh, you know, and video service. So a whole range of cloud-based capabilities. In all the jobs you've had, is this the best one? This is absolutely the best one. You know why? Because I'm uh, in the. I'm looking forward. Many of the jobs that I've had in the past, including one or two at Cisco, I was looking sort of sideways or backwards and more defensive posture. This one is is all attack, all forward, all helping customers get to some promised place. So it's very exciting. That's very cool. That's yeah. very cool. All right, so let's get to it. First up, what is an enterprise social collaboration platform and how do you see it changing the adoption and, uh, and use of traditional workplace tools? You know, um, the ways companies have been traditionally organized for quite some time has all really been hierarchical. Um, there's a CEO, there's a functional organization, there may be divisions, there, there are groups that do certain things, and they're all done for a particular purpose. You know, there's control, there's hierarchy, there's structure, especially the public ones, because there's some accountability to shareholders and customers. But really, you know, if you think about how the world is starting to engage, uh, especially in the consumer world, is about people making lateral connections, people doing many-to-many -many connections, and wouldn't it be nice for an organization to, even though it's structured hierarchically, to behave as if it was free-flowing, you know, more connected between its people, across its division, across its functions, more collaborative. So taking social networking capabilities, and bringing that into the enterprise, is the purpose of these enterprise collaboration platforms. So we've built one over the last couple of years that allows us to engage uh, employees in a different way, uh, onboard new hires, make connections that didn't exist, share information, and uh, create a more vibrant organization. And that's why I'm so excited about this. That's very cool. Now I've got to ask you, we hear about these management philosophies, you know, driving decision making down deeper into the organization, giving more people a say, uh, changing and breaking up that hierarchical model. What you're selling allows them to do that, but you also have a cultural challenge within your customers. How do you convince them that this actually will make them quicker to decisions, faster in the marketplace, and more competitive overall? You know, the biggest fear for most of our customers is, well, hey, you know, what if I make this very democratic? You know, am I going to lose all control? Um, and so I think there is, just like you rightly said, it's not just technology or process change, there's a big cultural change associated with this. So the best customers are the ones that are already ready for that cultural change. They're in markets that are in transition. They are in uh, geographies that need that more integrated feel. They are growing rapidly or perhaps even shrinking, you know, or their business models are under attack. Um, and I think that applies to almost every business here today, right? Um, in some form or the other, everything is changing. So the cultural changes are critical to ensure, in fact, that the, the organization stays vibrant for the future. So the very things you're fearful of are the things you actually need to embrace. Right. And in my view, uh, these technologies and tools around social networking allow you to make that happen in a controlled way, in a, in a concerted sort of way, in an open, transparent way, so that there's no hidden agendas. And it and unleashes the power of uh, you know, collaborative environments for the betterments of the companies and the products and the customers they support. Let's drill down on that a little bit. What are some of the business value cases for uh, social collaboration platforms such as Cisco WebEx Social? Yeah. You know, there are so many different uh, capabilities and I'm discovering every day what some of these platforms can do. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay. Uh, one is um, managing projects in a different way. Um, Typically projects are managed by program managers who essentially have meetings and they discuss status and then they send out emails and they build these spreadsheets. Now, maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe you don't need those status meetings. Maybe the meeting should be about the, the direction you're going or the product or the service you're building or the customer you're trying to support. Um, so maybe you can do away with the, the 
sort of the rigorous connections that need to be created, and you could use these platforms to promote that kind of information flow. Um, the second is onboarding of new employees. Uh, we, even in companies that are not growing right rapidly, you're always hiring employees, right. moving positions. People come in and they don't really know where they are, who the people they need to be connected. These tools allow for that connection to take place rapidly. The third is to make things um, that you do on a day-to-day -day basis much simpler. So sharing a file, finding somebody you need to, uh, seeing if they're available. Um, all these things can be done in a social platform much easier. There's other things. There's the innovation component of this. So how do you innovate faster? How do you share information across functions? Uh, it promotes uh, cross-functional integration uh, to deliver projects and capabilities faster. So there's so many horizontal use cases, it's unbelievable. Now, there are some vertical use cases as well. So within, uh, one of our customers said, you know, they look at these tools for both vertical and horizontal integration. Okay. So vertical integration is uh, very interesting to me in that it's all within the group or the function or the geography. The horizontal integration is between and across those. And so if you have a tool that allows you to do both, which unfortunately email today does not, um, it gives you the opportunity to unleash the power of the organization better. So. Let's talk about some of that. How can customers implement real-time and asynchronous communications uh, for more effective collaboration across their enterprise between silos, intra-silos, as you just described? You know, um, we don't come in every day thinking, I'm going to read my email now, or I'm going to get on a meeting, um, or right now I've got to pick up the phone and call someone. You're doing it as part of the work that you do, right? So it should be a natural extension. And so when, what does a human do uh, as a knowledge worker? You come into work, you have you know, long-term projects, short-term projects, you have uh, immediate things that need attention. So what you do is you, you create, you share, you absorb, you decide, you research. These are the things that knowledge workers do. You connect, you collaborate, you communicate. So this platform allows you to do that naturally. You know, you, you, it's based on the work that you're doing, not the fact that you need to pick up the phone and call someone or you be in a meeting. It's about the work that you're doing and what is the best way to perform or accomplish that work. And I think it's, um, you know, it just seems so crazy to me that it's taken us 25, 30 years of evolution to figure out that there are better ways to do things. But everybody has their own favorite. We come to four now with a set of tools and capabilities. How do those fit in with what customers are already using, yeah. and how do we take into account that certain customer sets within customers might prefer to do things this way, yeah. others leverage these tools? Talk a little bit about that. You know, um, our, our perspective is of one of evolution. You know, you don't sort of stop doing what you're doing and suddenly go do something else. Uh, it's going to take a few years um, for a company to sort of morph from a culture of perhaps uh, being hierarchical, siloed, and you know, not so transparent to one that is transparent. So you sort of move from where you are. You might use email for certain things. It's a great tool. It's not like it's ever going to go away or anything, but you start using it for things that make sense. You might decide that you want to do an IM for certain things that make sense. Sometimes you might say, no, I just want to write a document and I want to just send, uh, share it through a, so a social tool such as this. So I think what we want to do is to sort of blend what people are doing with right. the traditional tools today with these modern tools. And I think what you'll find is over time, the, the end user finds naturally a better way to do things. I'll give you an example in our private lives. Um, the younger generation has found that uh, to do many-to-many -many communication is much easier than picking up the phone or uh, sending an email to each person. So they post on Facebook. So everybody within their friends network knows about their status and things that have changed. You don't have to call everybody to do that. And also, similarly, you can look at your news feed and see all the things that are happening across everybody you know. You don't have to go and log into each of their profiles to figure out what they're doing. Um, so I think there's a simpler and easier way naturally to do things over time, and I think the blend of these tools will naturally lead users to these new plat paradigms, which is what our expectation is. So we're not forcing people to rep and replace. We're taking into account what they're already using. Yep. Do you, however, when you squint your eyes and you look down the, head, the road into the future, do you see what you think will be the eventual model? What kind of tools will it be? One unified tool, will it still be many as we leverage today? You know, I'm, I'm, my prognostication, and that's at best what it can be, is that there will be um, uh, a unifying influence, but not maybe one place to go to. So okay. uh, think of it as a back-end platform that supports this unified experience, and 
You could be on a mobile device, you could be at home, you could be at work, you could be switching contexts. In fact, if you go far enough, maybe there comes a time when you and I don't work for any one company. We're just free agents and we're working for ourselves. Uh, this is the sort of the end all be all state, right? But in that, we contact switch between the work we're doing for one company or the other or some other you know, um, freelance ability. Now, that's a utopian world, but if we could build tools that allowed you to switch context so rapidly and easily, then you're bound to be more productive in the current context of workplace that we know today. So I see that sort of unifying influence, but perhaps not one place to go. It, it all seems natural. Okay, so if there's not one place to go, everybody's got to play nice together, which means the stuff you're doing today, it's got to have standards-based baked in. Talk ah. a little bit about your effort to make sure that everything works with everything else. Absolutely right. Think of it in the future. Um, you don't have your own power plant at home, do you? You go and get it from the utility and you plug it in. You don't have your own gas station at home. You go to the gas station to get gas. From my perspective in the future, you um, will consume all of these capabilities from some cloud. It could be running in your data center in a private cloud, it could be a public cloud, but it'll be really a cloud of clouds. It's not something that you get from one place. You don't buy all your groceries just from one place, you have to go to multiple places for the types of things you want. So our view is that there's a connection between these clouds and there's a transition to that kind of model over time, and our expectation is that it'll take several years to get there. Um, so integration, standards, and the ability to interoperate between these clouds and these uh, social capabilities. Uh, we call them social today, we might call them something else tomorrow. Right. The fact is it's a platform for collaboration. And it uses all of the um, many to many, really massive um, communication and collaboration paradigms that exist there, you know, Twitter, Twitter Facebook, um, to essentially bring those capabilities into the enterprise so organizations can be more nimble. And, the standards that are needed are going to be such that these multiple networks or universes can connect to each other, can pass information freely. And uh, the Cisco WebEx social platform is now going to be supporting a lot of those standards as we go forward. When you meet with customers and talk about what they're using, talk about how they're using these tools, are you surprised at how little they're leveraging free social media tools that are out there? Or are you surprised at how much they are and that they don't realize how vulnerable they are and they need big boy tools and a platform on top of that, such that you provide? It's a great question, it's a little bit of both. On the external side, to connect with their consumers, they're using a lot of it. But internally, they're using the same old tools we've been using for 25 years. Huh. So there's this dichotomy that I'm, I'm trying to drive to get to a point with our vision at Cisco, with these WebEx uh, you know, platforms and tools to be able to get and drive into one sort of unified force. Also, I think there'll be a blurring between internal and external. So you won't know where you're inside a company and talking to people, you have to, the system will just do that naturally for you over time. Very good, in 10 seconds or less, what's the number one thing you want to accomplish between now and the end of the year? From my perspective, it's very simple. We want to engage with customers and drive adoption and make them more productive. If I can make customers more productive and get them to tell stories on our behalf, that's the best thing that I can get to. And it's our job, I think, with collaboration to make our customers more uh, productive. And that's the journey we've been on. Oh, that's fantastic. Everybody wants to tell that story. Yep. Morali, thank you so much for the time. Yep. You've been listening to Morali Sathrar, at Vice President, General Manager of the Cloud Collaboration Business Unit at Cisco. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. I'm TC Doyle.